What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. So let's start out on this Z330R talking about the model number. Now, on the model number, first letter being the Z. This is going to indicate that this is a zero turn mower. Then whenever we move over to the next digit to the three, this is gonna be the indicator of the family that that mower is in. So this one here is going to be a Z3. Some of the other zero turn families we're gonna have are gonna be Z5s, Z7s, and Z9s. Now, whenever we move to the next two digits, the three and the zero, the three is going to be the kind of indicator of the size of the mower. And then the zero is gonna be the indicator of what type of engine the mower has. So if you see a zero in these model numbers, it's going to be a Kawasaki engine. Now you could also have a Briggs and Stratton engine, which is going to have a five as the indicator for that. And then our last letter here is going to be the trim level indicator. So just like in a lot of other John Deere equipment, we're going to have E, M, and R, E being for the most basic model, M being for the mid-spec model, and then R being for the most loaded out trim level that you can get in this series of mower. Next, let's move to the rear of the mower and talk just a little bit about the engine. So what we're going to have on this mower is gonna be a 23 horsepower Kawasaki engine. Now, if we look right here on top, the first thing that we're gonna see is a 23 horsepower, but it's going to say John Deere here on the sticker. So to make sure that you know that this is a Kawasaki, if we look here on the back side, side of the engine we will see a sticker right here and over onto the side right there showing that this is a kawasaki engine now as far as service points go on this engine some of the things we need to look at starting over here on the left hand side first we're going to have the fuel filter right back here moving up from that we're going to have our fuel pump located right here over on the side of the engine then if we move back down towards the front of the engine here we're going to have one of our spark plugs now this is a v twin engine so we're going to have two of those spark plugs one on this side and then one over on the right hand side as well then right here in the middle of the engine on top is going to be our air filter so we can simply raise that up get a look at our air filter then if we move around over here on the right hand side towards the back of the engine here this is where our oil system is going to be so first thing that we're going to have is going to be our oil fill and dipstick so if we twist the cap here pull it up you can see right there that this is a dipstick and this is also where we're going to fill our engine oil moving down from that is going to be our oil filter and then right here, hanging off the side at the top, this is going to be our oil drain hose. So it's as simple as pushing that out, pulling this either to the front or the back, getting that in a spot where we can drain that oil very, very easily. Really nice feature on these mowers. Now, while we're here at the rear of the mower, we'll also talk about the transaxles that are on this mower. These are gonna be the Hydro Gear EZT transaxles. These are going to have the one inch axle rods that come off the side. And these are going to be the transaxles that we see oftentimes on on this size of mower. These are gonna be made for this size of mower to make sure and last you a very long time. Now, along with these transaxles, a couple of things we need to point out is that you are going to have transaxle release levers right over here back behind each side. We'll have these levers here that we simply pull out, set those down in the notch. Now this is going to release the transaxle in case we get in those situations where we need to push this mower. Maybe we have a situation where the mower dies and we cannot get it back started and we need to get it off of the yard or out of a, a spot where it does not need to be. You do have the option of releasing these transaxles and releasing your parking brake and then you can move this mower about however you need to. Hopefully you're never in that situation, but if you are, you do have that option here. Also, while we're here at the rear, one of the things I'd point out is that the Z330R is going to come with a tow hitch on the back. If you happen to get another Z3 model that does not have this tow hitch, you can easily add this, but this is gonna be very important, especially if we're gonna wanna use any type of rear implements that we're gonna be pulling, or if we happen to decide to add the bagger kit to this mower, which is also an option on the Z330R. Now let's move here to the front of the mower and talk about some of the things that you're going to see. For one, I always like to start with the front frame here. What you're gonna have here is a two and a half by two inch front frame all across the front here. Now this is gonna add to the durability of this mower and add to the ride quality, having this strong front frame. And then down along the side rails on each side, you're gonna have one and a half inch by two inch running all the way out the rear of the mower here on both sides. Now with our front spindles here, our front forks in this housing here where your spindle is going to go up and in. This is going to have a sealed ball bearing at the bottom and a plastic bushing here at the top. Now this is going to be different from previous models of the Z3s as before. This just had plastic bushings on the top and the bottom, but now they've gone in and added in this ball bearing to help add to the longevity 
of that spindle housing. Now also here on the front, we're going to have a bumper right here up front to help protect this machine if we happen to run into anything. We're going to have the LED lights right here on both sides. So if you are one of those that has to do some work at night or maybe has to finish up some mowing once the sun's gone down, you do have those lights. We're also gonna have an easily removable foot platform here that simply raises up and pulls off very, very easily so we can get to the top of our deck if we need to. We're also gonna have this floor mat right here on the foot platform. Now this is going to reduce the vibration which helps to reduce fatigue. It's also gonna act as a non-slip mat here or a slip resistant mat for whenever you're getting on and off the mower. Now also here at the front, what you'll notice is we have this large foot pedal here. This is going to be the raise and lower for our mower deck, which I'll show more about here in a minute. So we no longer have a hand lift option on the Z3 mowers. It's all going to be the foot lift here. Now also at the front, a couple of things I'd point out right below our seat. For one to the left and the right of the seat, right in front of our control sticks, we're going to have these two bolts. These are going to be to adjust the tracking on our mowers. And if you're not sure what that is, I have a video about that that I'll actually put down in the description below so that you can check that out. And then also directly below the Z-Track sticker below the seat, we're going to have this sticker here. And this is going to show that these are assembled in Greenville, Tennessee, USA. So if you are wanting a USA made mower, this right here certifies that these are made in the USA. Next, I'll go ahead and get in the operator station here and show you where all of the controls are. But before I do that, we'll talk a little bit here about the seat. So the seat we're gonna have on this mower for one is going to be a cut and sewn seat that's made from a marine grade vinyl here, meaning that it's going to be good for all types of weather. It's going to provide that extra protection to the seat with that vinyl here on top. So this is going to be a nice option. It's also going to be that 20 inch high back with arm Rest. It's also going to have a little bit of a fitted feel to it to kind of help hold you in that mower. And then also this seat is going to be adjustable if we flip it up here right on the bottom is where we do our adjustment of the slide. So we're going to have five different positions here to slide this seat either forward or backward simply by releasing this knob here and then sliding that seat where we want it and then screwing that knob back in. And then also we are going to have that seat safety switch on the bottom here that is going to make sure that an operator is in the seat seat before we can operate the mower deck. Now, once we get on the seat here, controls are really pretty simple on this mower. Of course, this is going to be a zero turn. So the first thing here is going to be our control levers. A couple of things about these is that the control levers are going to be adjustable. We can see right here that they are adjustable either forward or backward and up and down. So this is going to be customizable to fit many different operators with these control levers. And then also, whenever we pull these control levers in, this is what's going to release our parking brake. So if we need to set the parking brake, we put put the levers out to release the parking brake we pull it in. So a lot of times we would forget sometimes to release our parking brake whenever using these mowers. And if you have done this in the past, you know that if we tried to move our mower or pull our handles in without releasing that parking brake, it would try to kill the mower. So now we've eliminated that by integrating that parking brake into the control levers themselves. So aside from the control levers, like we talked about down here at our feet, we do have our raise and lower pedal. Now what we're going to do here is push in to raise up on that mower. And then we have our dial over here to the right where we're going to select our height. Before there was always a transport position that put this up into the highest position and locked it into place. Now with these mowers, there is not a transport position. Once we raise that up and put it in the four and a half position, then this is going to be our travel position. Now, once we have that pedal pushed in, we can turn this dial to whichever height setting that we need it at. So you have all heights from one and a quarter inch up to four and a half inches all in quarter inch increments so you can find that exact height that you're used to cutting your lawn on right there with that easy to use turn dial. Now, while we're over here on our right talking about the turn dial, we'll go ahead and talk about our controls over here. First thing that you're going to see above that turn dial is going to be our PTO on and off or also our blade on and off. This is gonna be a simple pop button that is up for on and down for off. Right next to that, we are going to have our hour meter. Right back behind that, we're gonna have our dual lever system here with our choke and our throttle. So our choke is going to be this black lever over here. One thing about it is that it is not spring loaded. So once you have this mower started and you've used the choke, we're gonna have to physically reach over and pull this back. On some mowers, this is on a spring system where you cannot leave it in choke but on this Z330R, you do have to make sure and slide that choke lever back. Then our orange lever here is going to be our throttle lever. 
right there. Next to that's going to be our key switch where we have the stop position, the lights position, and then of course all the way over to the right is going to be our start position. Back behind that is going to be a storage cubby here. Now this storage cubby is going to have a lid on it and then you're also going to have a tool right back here. Now this tool is nice to have on board because it's going to adjust a few different things. For one, it's going to adjust our levers here. So we can use that tool to loosen off these nuts from the bolts and then be able to change the positions of our lever. And then we can also use it for our tracking system bolts here. So if we're having that issue on the fly where we need to adjust either these levers or that tracking, we have the tool right there on board in that storage cubby. Now over to our left-hand side, we don't necessarily have any controls here, but this is where our beverage holder is going to be right over here. And then also we're gonna have our fuel opening also. Now this is going to be a tethered lid on our fuel opening. So once we take that off, we're not gonna be able to lose that lid. And then we are going to have the opening here that's going to go right into our three gallon tank. Now on the Z3s, they are not going to have a fuel gauge on them, but once we raise the seat up here, we can see that the fuel tank is translucent. So we can see our fuel right there once we raise that seat up. And then also once we raise the seat up, this is also going to give us access to our battery, which is going to be another very important service item. Next, let's talk about the mower deck on the Z330R. Now with this mower, you are going to have two deck options. You're going to have either the 48 XL deep or the 54 XL deep. So this is either gonna be a 48 inch deck or a 54 inch deck. Both of these are going to made out of a single piece of 10 gauge steel. The, they are going to have reinforcements over here on the trim side edge. And then you're also going to see a rolled lip around most of the deck to add to the strength of this deck whenever we're going across any type of material that may be bumpy, maybe we're running into things on these edges, that reinforcement is there to give you peace of mind. Now on both decks, we are going to have the flip up spindle covers over our two outside spindles that those are very nice. So that way, whenever we get done mowing, we can simply flip these up and blow that debris out from underneath them. Now it's very important that whenever we are talking about cleaning this mower throughout the mowing season that we're using as little water as possible. And reason being is the more water that we get onto these mowers, the more chance we have for corrosion or rust and buildup. So we want to make sure and use air more than water. And it actually tells us right here on top of our spindle covers, use air, not water. And then we're also gonna see a couple of markings here that have arrows pointing down, showing that you do have some vent spaces here for the air, but then also these flip up. Now we're also gonna have grease zerks on each one of the spindles. And on either the 48 or the 54, you're going to have three spindles across the deck. So three blades, equals three spindles and we need to be making sure we are greasing each one of these spindles. They are gonna have a grease zerk on the bottom side here where you can get to that grease zerk very, very easy. Make sure that we're maintenancing that and taking care of it. Now also we are going to have a washout port right here on top. So this is gonna to be to where we can hook a hose up to this, get on a flat level concrete or asphalt surface, turn that hose on, lower the deck all the way down to the ground where it, the side of the deck is making contact with either that concrete or asphalt and then turn those blades on so they can churn that water underneath and get the underside of that deck clean. Now, I know I just said use air more than water. So this is something that we only wanna do in situations where maybe we have a ton of buildup or also maybe just at the end of the year to get things good and cleaned up. And then I always suggest is if you can break out that compressor or that leaf blower and blow on the underside of the deck and also blow through our discharge chute over on the right-hand side just to get some air through there to hopefully dry that up as best as possible. Now also on these decks, you are gonna have anti-scalping wheels on the front. These are gonna be adjustable depending on the height that you're mowing at. So you wanna make sure, depending on the height that you're mowing at, that you are adjusting these anti-scalping wheels so they make sure and give you the most protection for your yard or whatever spaces you may be mowing so that we don't end up with those scalp spots whenever we go over those bumps or uneven surfaces. So make sure that we are adjusting those. It says right there on the side of the wheel what height that the mower would be at and where that wheel needs to be it be positioned when mowing at those heights. Now over on the right hand side, like I talked about, we do have the discharge chute over on this side. We have a nice wide opening here and this discharge chute is going to be on a spring. That way if we do happen to run into anything or if that discharge flap starts to pop open, it will have that spring to push it back down, making sure that it's staying in place to keep people safe around you and also keep yourself safe from any material happening to blow up and on you coming right out of that discharge chute. Now let's talk about a few specs and dimensions on this mower. This is gonna be important 
important whenever we're looking at buying one of these, making sure that we can fit it in those places that we need it and get through any openings that we may be driving through. So height wise, we're going to be 44 inches at the top of the seat. Length wise, we are going to be 75 and a half inches long. And then whenever we are talking about width, it's going to depend on which deck we have. So on the 48 inch deck, we are going to be 63 inches wide with the deflector down. And then if we raise that deflector up, we can get that down to 53 inches wide. Then whenever we move to the 54 inch deck, we're going to be looking at 69 inches wide with the deflector down and then 57 whenever we raise that deflector up. Now, some of the other things that you may need to know is that the weight on these mowers with the 48 inch deck, we're looking at 611 pounds. Whenever we move up to the 54 inch deck, we're looking at 623 pounds. We're also gonna have a towing capacity on these mowers of 250 pounds. So whatever implements you may be pulling here at the rear, 250 pounds is going to be your max right there. Now, some of the other specs is speed on this mower is often a big one. So whenever we're going forward, we have a top speed of seven mile an hour. Going backward, we're gonna have a rear speed of three and a half mile an hour. And then like we talked about before, we are going to have that three gallon fuel tank. Now I'll go ahead and hop on the mower here so you can hear how it sounds. We'll go ahead and fire this up. Just remember this is gonna be that 23 horsepower Kawasaki engine. Go ahead and put our choke on, turn the key. Make sure and turn that choke off. So this is gonna be at the low idle. This is about mid throttle here. And then wide open where you would wanna mow is right here. So we can dial that back down a little bit, pull our handles in. Very, very smooth, very, very easy to drive. Right here, we're on this gravel where it's good and bumpy. Still a really nice ride to this mower. Here's a look at the LED lights right there at the front. Now you'll notice that we have some in the front here. And we also are gonna have some off to the sides here, which is gonna be nice if we're mowing in the dark that you will be able to see off to the side with that light. Now, last thing to talk about on this mower is going to be price and warranty. Now, these mowers generally, as of 2023, are going for around $4,100. And then the warranty on these machines is going to be a three-year, 200-hour bumper to bumper. Now, in previous year models, the Z300s only had a two-year, 120-hour. So they have upped that to the three-year, 200-hour. So you get a little more warranty for the price that you're paying on these mowers. Now, as far as that $4,100 goes, that is going to be dependent kind of on where you're at, what type of incentives are going on right then and there, what your dealership has these priced at. So don't necessarily take my word for it. Make sure to go check with your local dealership so you can get the best price on these machines that is available. Like I said, there could be incentives or deals going on to help you get some extra money off. And then also, if you are looking at financing one of these mowers, you definitely wanna to talk to your dealership to see what type of rates, how long you can go, and what your payment would be on a mower like this. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you're needing any John Deere parts at all, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.